If you're wondering how to do punch ins and outs while recording with Reaper, watch this video tutorial. A Real Home Recording viewer asked me this question and I'm actually surprised that I never covered this topic in the five years almost that this channel has been in existence. But here it is, how to do punch ins with recording. Really simple in Reaper, all right? Reaper is easy, like, like I try to say with the video series. You go down here to the record button, right click it, and you have two options. Time selection auto punch or auto punch selected items. Let me show you the time selection one first. So that's selected. And what I'm going to do is go over here to where my material has already been recorded. And with my left mouse button, I'm going to click and drag the period of time that I want to dub over. So I'm going to pretend like this last track here is my vocal track. So I'm going to arm it over here. And now I have my left channel is going. That's why you can see the waveform going. It might be a little bit delayed because I have plugins going but you'll see what happens. So at this point, I can move the edit cursor wherever I want, but obviously I want to move it to a point where I'm gonna have the music leading up to the point where I wanna start recording. So watch what happens. As I keep talking, you'll see that uh, I'm actually gonna um, turn my speakers down right now, but I'll have the audio going for you. So at that point, you might not be able to hear me, but you'll hear what I record. So I'm going to start, I'm going to keep talking right now as I hit record, check. And then it cuts me off right there. Now, I recorded over the kick drum. I'm, I can uh, disarm the recording now and hit escape to get rid of the selection. Now here's what it sounds like. I'm gonna put my speakers back up here and solo this track. So it'll be a bunch of kick drums and then my voiceover. Now I'm recording because I'm at the point of the time selection. La 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 la. So that's how you do the time selection auto punch. Now there's another option. I'm gonna undo this because that is absolutely horrible. <laughs> um, it is the select item or item selection one. So this is how this one works. This is how I would use it if I use this mode. Usually I just do the time selection because it's easier. But the problem with that is if you accidentally uh, you know, expand this somehow, but you know, then you got to select it over. But to me, the time selection one is the better option, but they have this because different people like to have different methods of doing it. So in order to do the same thing that I just did with the time selection, what I can do and what, like I said, what I would do is delete this, I'm sorry, split this item right here. So I'm going to hit C, which is my default item split option there. You can also right click it which I'll do right now. So I'm gonna left click right here because this is where I want to end my recording. Right click and split items at cursor. But like I said, see how it says C? So C is my key for that. All right, now the final step is to click. Actually, there's a few more steps. Click the item. So right there, that's what I wanna record. And then what I wanna do is up here, I, gotta, I have to click up here. If I click down here, it's gonna ruin my selection. I think. Yep, see, it took the selection off. So click the selection again, and I'm gonna put my edit cursor clicking up here on the time code bar, or whatever this is called right here, the time bar. Click that. It's still selected, so what I'm gonna do is hit record arm, and do the same exact thing I did with the auto, other auto punch. I actually forgot to change my mode, so I'm gonna do that now. Click. Uh, right click that, the record button, and that, obviously. And now I'm going to record it. All right, 
I forgot to put my speakers down for that, but that's okay. So I'm going to solo this after I disable the record arm. Play it back so you can hear what I did. Uh, la 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 la. That's it. Really simple to do. It's definitely something that your musician will ask you to do at some point, especially when recording vocals. That's where punches are usually done, but you can do it with any instrument where there's a part where they can come back in while they're playing. Now, I will say this. This is a huge tip, so please don't stop the video at this point. Very good tip coming up here. When you are doing vocal punches, I highly recommend the singer sing along to the old track leading up to the vocal. And the reason is you tend to get more in sync with the old take that way. And it also doesn't come across as if you have a big inhale breath of energy when the punch in comes, because if you're doing this take live, you're not going to have a lot of breaths. You will be out of breath. So if you're punching in, especially in the middle of a phrase, you have to sing along and then it should come in good. You know, good luck. Recording can be fun, recording can be hard, but auto punching makes things a little bit easier. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com. By the way, don't forget to take auto punch off after you're finished with that. Otherwise, you might not record and that that's a problem. See ya.